God is just good. Amen. My voice does not want to cooperate today, so if it sounds like I'm yelling at you, I am. <laughs> Amen. Because God has placed a message within us, and we're not going to allow voice to get in the way. Amen. God bless you. We are thankful. And it was grace that brought us this far, and grace will lead us on. We cannot make it without the grace of God. Amen. So we, we greet you in the, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're just thankful to be here today and thankful for an interview. Praising God for another soul uh, that has been saved. Amen. Amen. How we praise God for how he continues to add to the church yes. such as should be saved. Amen. 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 So you're in the right place at the right time for the right message, and I pray that you will have the right response. If it seems like I'm in a hurry, I am. Because this message is burning. Amen. Amen. That you need to hear. It is a life changing message. Amen. If you did see that. Open the Bibles to the Gospel of John. Amen. Chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Amen. And you find that this will say amen. John's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. If you have the scripture, say amen. 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 Wonderful to hear the pages of the Bible. Amen. amen. I ran off and left my glasses. If I miss a word, y'all will find me. <laughs> Nothing's going to stop us today. You have a scripture? It reads, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus cried, saying, if any man
in particular. And he is telling them, your self-effort is useless. <laughs> I know you're religious and you know the law and you're the teachers of the law. In fact, you say you're perfect because you're a Pharisee. You have separated yourself from everybody else because you're so special. But God says to them, Jesus says to them, your self-effort is useless. Instead, you need to surrender to me. I come all the way to help somebody today. Because self-effort will leave you frustrated. <laughs> Y'all help me, I'm going to preach long. Self-effort Amen. It will cause you to feel like you've gone as far as you can go, but there's still no fruit in your life. Amen. And man loves self-effort because if he makes it happen, he gets to take the credit. But Jesus says to his Pharisee, if you surrender to me, I get the credit. And you won't have to work so hard. Because <laughs> I have all power in my hand. I, I wish I could get some help from here today. Listen. Jesus is saying to you. Are you tired of trying to make life work? On your own. Are you tired of trying to figure it out? On your own. All by yourself. Have you tried and tried and tried again and you still come up empty? You still come up short? Jesus says to you, it's time to surrender. It's time to give up and give over and let me work it out for you. In fact, the Sunday school lesson helps you a lot. It says he plans the work and then he works the plan. That means you can work all night and all day and it still won't work. Because not only does he plan, but he implements the plan. That's what he was telling you too, in this lesson. Hmm. So are you tired of self-effort? Did you not know the Holy Spirit? That's what this lesson is about. The Holy Spirit is God's power to bring about change in your life. Did you not know that the Holy Spirit can change you from the inside out? The lesson says you need a deep spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you receive Jesus Christ, he puts his Holy Spirit on the inside of you. <laughs> and then your deep spiritual needs can be met. I'm trying to help somebody. Self-effort means you're trying to reach a goal that is unattainable on your own. There's something about us that cries out to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because God made us in his image and he put within us a desire to be like him. But we don't realize that on our own. God's goal for us is that we be like him. Y'all don't get this along the way. So if you, if you think you have not arrived yet, there's a reason. <laughs> because you have not yet accepted Jesus. Who has the power to take you where you can't go on your own. There's a lot in here. Let me, let me try to fix this. <laughs> this is about the Feast of Tabernacles. If you look back at verse 1, it talks about the Feast of Tabernacles. How is that related to this lesson? In the Feast of Tabernacles, the Jews get seven days. Y'all need to get this seventh thing down. I'm going to come back to it. They spent seven days in temporary shelter. <laughs> Remember that? And during that time, they were thankful to God for how he had been with them through the wilderness. 
They were so thankful they spent seven days. Y'all not going to do Seven days thanking God for being with them through the wilderness. What, what does that have to do with the lesson? It, it simply says that for seven days they remembered that God was present with them in the wilderness. I'm trying to help you. This is a great illustration. And how was he present with them? Well, he showed up as a cloud during the day. His presence was with them during the day. Y'all want to get to see the But not only that, a cloud of pillar of fire by night. He was with them at night. He was with them at day. He was with them 24 hours. So what did they have? They had the presence of God. They had the protection of God. And they had the provisions of God. Israel didn't go through the wilderness by themselves. God was present with them every step of the way. What does that have to do with the message? The Holy Spirit is with you 24 hours a day. And it goes with you wherever you go because it does not leave you. It's always with you. Just like God was with Israel in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit is with us and that means God with us. Every step of the way. That's why you can have, amen, all that God wants you to have because he lives in us. Y'all going to miss this. And so God takes that example. Jesus takes that example in chapter 7 of John to show the Jews that I'm the one that has the power to give you the Holy Spirit. And just like I was with your forefathers in the wilderness, I can be with you right now. <laughs> I'm preaching all the way through. That, that there are five points of doctrine in this text. But there are also five key terms that are connected to the doctrine. I want to give you those ten words. And this is the whole message. And I can't preach it all, so you got to get the rest of it yourself. If I was in the country, I would tell you, you got to chop your own road. I may not be able to chop on your road. I may not be able to catch you up. You got to chop your own road today. Because there's too much in here. Listen. Jesus says to the Jews, you have spiritual needs. That's the first point of doctrine. But what goes with that is a key word called doubting. How are you going to have your spiritual needs met if you're full of doubt? I got to teach it all because it's important. And, and then Jesus said, uh, you got to surrender to me. But how can you surrender if you're not coming to me? Hey. Oh, that, that's the double word. Y'all going to miss it. Y'all going to miss it. And, 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 <laughs> woo. Then he says, I have satisfaction for you. But you can't get it if you ain't drinking. Then he says, if you accept me, I've got a silent weapon for you. But you can't get it if you're not believing. Amen. Are y'all keeping up in my point too fast? <laughs> and, and then he says, I've got supernatural power for you. But you can't get it if you're not receiving. Did anybody get all that? Jesus issues a great invitation. And he's saying to us, I've got everything that you need. I've got the power to live on the inside of you. But God told me to show you he didn't just start using and amen, letting the Holy Spirit have his way in the Gospels. But the Holy Spirit was working in the beginning. And I have to go there because I'm trying to show you something. Amen. Don't y'all give up. Y'all trying to figure out where am I going? This is a deep message. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, hurry up and get there. I'm going to show you something real quick that's connected to John chapter 7. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, 
I'm going fast. Y'all better catch up. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the, and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the other one. He said, what you need is already on the inside of you. I better say it again because you missed it. Stop looking other places and look on the inside. What you need is already on the inside. If, if the Holy Spirit is God's created power, imagine what your life can be like. <laughs> there are some things you ain't seen yet that the Holy Spirit is ready to give you. But you got to surrender. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Thank you, God, for letting me preach this. Yes. Hovering, mm -hmm. waiting on you to surrender. Yes. The best is yet to come. Yes. You can expect the extraordinary, because what you need is already on the inside of you. Yes, Lord. You tired of being broke, disgusted? Yes. What you need is already on the inside of you. Yes, Lord. Hovering over you, waiting on you to, Lord Jesus. to surrender. I had to teach it this way because it needs to sink deep. Here's the conclusion. All of this that I've talked about is based on continuous action. You got to stop doubting. You got to keep coming to him. You got to keep drinking. You got to keep believing. You got to keep receiving. It's continuous. Jesus said in, in the book of, of, of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, it talks about the continuous Building of the Holy Spirit, guess how it occurs? When you give. You can walk out and be. I conclude with this. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, John talks about the anointing. And he says the anointing abides in you. Which means it never leaves. So some of us should be embarrassed that we are not a looking like what we are. Because it never leaves us. But then he concludes by saying, and you shall abide in it. <laughs> How can you abide in the Holy Spirit? By yielding to it. Amen. God says you don't have an excuse for living right. Because the Holy Spirit continually abides in you. It never leaves you. It doesn't come and go. It's always bad. And how do you abide in it when you scoot over and say, I surrender all to you and let him plan the work and work the plan. Self-effort or surrender? is your choice. Who's our example? It's Jesus. Jesus said, I can't do it. He said, Father, let your will be done. And he went out on Calvary's cross and he surrendered to the will of the Father just for us. Can I get a witness? The Bible says the Holy Ghost couldn't come until Jesus was glorified. Guess where he got glorified? On the Calvary's cross. Because he surrendered his hands to the nails. He surrendered his feet to the spikes. He surrendered his side to the spear. He surrendered his blood. And it came down from Calvary's cross just for your sins. He surrendered all. And when he surrendered
that he was glorified. Because the sun refused to shine. Because God said, my son has paid the debt. It's paid in full. All you have to do is surrender to Jesus. And surrender to the Holy Spirit. It's already done. How was it going? Of living water. Guess what's on the inside of you? River. I can't make it no plainer than this. You're sitting on blessings. Rivers of blessings. Hovering over your life. Available to you if you can say, I surrender. Thank you, God. Somebody heard the message today. Thank you, y'all help me extend the invitation. If you receive the word today, it says self-surrender. It will leave you empty and bored with darkness in your life. But if you surrender, there's light. God can fill your life. God can, amen, live with the void that's in your life. It's your decision. Would you come? All of you will never stand and encourage somebody to come. I know you heard the message. Blessed Savior, yes. I surrender all life, 